I'd like to ask the fundamental question of, you know, like, how, how should brands think about growth as we're going into a fairly seismic transition in the coming years? Well, I think if anyone has ever sat in my seat, whether that's in a media role or anything else, I think the biggest challenge is you have marketers and consumer insights people who create journeys on segments, which are very narrow, very small, and by the way, if we only targeted those segments, we would never grow, right? right? And so when we actually think about how to grow our brands, whether that's switch, whether that's acquisition, whatever those things are, we're looking at audiences and now data allows us to really hone in on addressable audience, sizable addressable audiences, but that's not where the work is happening in terms of the consumer insights. So one of the things we did over the last three years is move from a traditional CPG segmentation model to actually leading with what we call our growth audiences. So those addressable, identifiable audiences, handing those over to our consumer insights teams. And I can give you an example on something like topical pain. You could look at your topical pain growth as I need to switch within my category, which means I need my category users. Well, when you're a number one brand, which we are fortunately in topical pain, our growth is gonna also come from growing the market. And so where can I get more growth? I can get that from pill pain users who maybe would consider topical pain, use topical pain um, creams as an additional use education. That consumer is probably very different than someone that is in the category. But when I would be handed a segmentation, I'd actually be handed a small, tiny journey on a small portion of those people that are currently in the category. And so we've actually started pushing what are with those addressable growth audiences to our consumer insights teams and said, do journeys on these people because these are the people we're ultimately going to be addressing. And that has taken us to a place where we actually are now starting to say, hey, you know what, some need top of mind awareness, others we're losing in consideration. And by the way, the message in consideration is not the same for every addressable audience. And so while as media people we say, wow, we can get really, really smart about finding our audiences, the, the communication and creative doesn't always deliver against those audiences. And so now, when we can map that out, we can hand that to our creative agencies and our creative excellence team and say, start helping us develop now the communication strategy against all of these audiences. So, so building out of that, so you know, in a, in a world where data minimization is a uh, is a reality, and privacy is not a luxury good, but a right, there's going to be less ability to look into areas of the internet or media and find potential new customers. Um, and I just wonder how you're thinking about that because today through third-party cookies, surveillance advertising, you know, oftentimes the, the behavioral journeys of users are used to look into non-obvious places and find people that might be meaningful to Senefi and other brands. Um, and how, how do you think about that? I know Gerard, I mean, you said that you, you know, you now oversee not only data partnerships, but also like the MarTech stack as well. I would assume that you know, uh, a lot of the MarTech stack has been implemented around, you know, I would say current data availability and utility. So, in, in short, we'll be just fine. If you'd asked me four years ago, I would have been apocalyptic. Be about this. I would have been apocalyptic about this four years ago, but I think we'll be just fine because we're working on two things. One is a foundation that test, stands the test of time, and the other one is everybody else is going to be in the same boat. So, they told me tomorrow. I wasn't allowed to use surveillance advertising. I have no problem using that word unless some of my business do have a problem with that. Then yes, we'd be at a competitive disadvantage. But if it goes away, we'll be just fine because we'll find these audiences in other ways, whether it's contextual or whether it's publisher networks or whether it's unified ID or whether it's with zero party, first party data. We didn't have this data 20, 30 years ago. We could be fine. I'm not concerned about it. I have opinions about whether it's good or bad. Um, but if, 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 it's just, if, the, if the plane feels it's level, fine. I have no worries. Cool. 